Carlin? First of all, I'd like to congratulate Tommy on uh, Special Teams Player of the Week. Pretty awesome. Good. Coach, with all the noise that's going on, and we've talked throughout the season about Harrison Bucket missing kicks, so how much of it is mental, how much of it is physical, and you know, whether it's laces up, in, out, towards him or whatever, how do you clean whatever's going on before the playoff starts so it doesn't affect the team? Well, we got three more weeks left here, and I told Bucker, I said, this is just like preseason. We're getting ready for the postseason, you know, and uh, we're going we're gonna to attack it that way. We're going to improve. We're going to improve each week, and we need to look at the whole thing, the whole operation, blocking, snapping, holding, kicking. And we're going to keep working at it, and, uh, you know, we'll fix it. Are you comfortable with the holds? Yes. Yeah, I'm very comfortable with the holds. How much of it is snapping? How much of it is? The uh, it's. I'm not going to break it down. You know, a percentage, but you know, everybody has a hand in it. You know, I mean, if if you make field goals, it's it's the, it's the protection's got to be good, the snaps got to be good, and the kick's got to be good, the hole's got to be great. You know, I mean, it, there's a lot into it that goes. You know, and, and Colquitt is definitely right as far as how much detail that there is involved in it. There's a lot. Uh, you know, but I mean, everybody has an important job. I mean. Uh, Winchester with the snap. I mean, he's got to he's got to be perfect on those on the rotation of the ball. I mean, that's that's where this thing's gotten to now. And, you know, the, it's such a science that uh, you know he has that thing perfectly rotated by the time he catches it, so he can try to get it down and the laces are pointed away. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes the laces are, are pointed at him and he's got to spin it and get it out. You know, so everybody's got to work together to get this thing uh, you know perfected, and and we will. You referenced Justin's comments. I mean, he. he he got kind of very you know, uh, specific about things. Rotating yeah. the ball different ways. You know, he's talking about the clock going. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he was, he, he's just trying to show you how detailed it is, and I think that's great. You know, he, he's, a, he's, you know he, he did a great job for us. You know, he's, a, he's a Chiefs fan. He's a Bucker fan, most importantly. Um, you know, and you know, everybody has their opinion, and he's absolutely right. There's a lot of detail that goes into it, and you know, it doesn't go unknown or unseen by us. You know, I don't need to hear it from Dustin to, you know, to make adjustments. Uh, just so everybody knows that. I mean, we're we're we we see it. We're coaching them. You know, and and that's where we are. I guess my question is, can Tommy spin both ways? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it depends on you know if the laces are, you know, if they're say they're at you know four o'clock or or, uh, or eight o'clock, you know, he can he can spin it back around this way. If they're you know back here, he'll he'll spin it here. So we push it and pull it according to what he, whatever he needs to get him away. From Bucker's, uh, you know, from his foot, being able to hit it. How hard is like? How much time does that take? I mean, I don't it's, know. That's it's fast. Big? I mean, it's you know, he, you catch it, and he'll he'll know as soon as he catches it, he'll know where the lace. If he can feel it, and he knows if he has to spin it or not. So I mean, that's how many reps. When we've got thousands and thousands of reps at this, that's why it's important that I mean, that's why you see punters being the holder. You know, in the past it used to be quarterbacks were able to do it, and they just didn't get enough practice doing it. Now, you know, it's the punters because they're out there all the time. They can work together, and it's such a science. Um, you know, it, it, it has to be him, and, 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 he's, and he's a very good holder. Make no mistake. If the laces aren't right, what's the expectation then, for whatever reason, if the laces Okay, if the laces are not right, if they're totally right at Bucker and he hits the laces, that, that could be a problem, you know, because it could deflect off his foot. Uh, if the laces are pointed one way or the other, uh, the science of it is not exact. I mean, as long as he is, is able to hit the ball, it doesn't distract him. He's still able to make the kick. You know, it's not it's not a physic physic thing where you know the, if they're pointed here, the ball's going to go that way. It's not it's not 100. percent It's all out. He hits that ball. It doesn't you know the laces don't have that much impact. It's more of a visional uh, vision thing. You know, the fact that he would be kicking the laces that's that's the dangerous thing. Carson mentioned yesterday just not wanting to reinvent the wheel so late in the season. How, how much right. do you have to fight maybe not, not changing and just kind of getting the reps? Uh, you know, we, you, you got to look at it. You got to see what you're doing, whether it's practice, reps, or it's um, are you doing too much, are you doing too little, um, you know, where you're spending your time. So that's that's my job, I and mean, that's that's what we do, and, and we'll get it we'll get it straightened out. I mean, Bucker's still a great kicker, you know, and you know we're not losing any faith in Bucker going forward. And I want everybody to relax. <laughs> well, you did say you, you did say that uh, Coker is a big fan of Bucker. I'm going to presume he's a big fan of Tommy Townsend as well. They talk about the missed kicks and what they're doing. When you go back on film, what are you seeing from game to game to game that would, you know, I guess give you uh, assurances that you know things will get cleaned up between now and the it's, start? It's, of it's Bucker's. It's Bucker's history. It's what he is. I mean, he's made. Uh, 
game-winning kicks for us. I mean, he's got, you know, I say this before, he's got pelts on the wall. He's got that. And, and we trust him, and, and, and he's going to get it fixed. You know, we, we will get it fixed. We will. When you guys grade these things, I assume everything's graded. You grade the snap on the rotations. Sure. And yeah. then great, if, it's a, if it's not a great snap, it, it holds harder. I mean, all these things kind of yes. work together. When you go back and, and, and grade these things, I mean, how close are you guys to where you need to be? Uh, without getting into specifics of who's did what, and that, you know, I mean, because I, I see where you're trying to go there, but uh, it's we we are we are close. I mean, we are close. I mean, Bucker, you know, he's got a lot of you know the injury, you know, all that stuff. All those things come into play here. You know, you looked into it yesterday. He's he's tried really hard the last couple of years to to not even see the laces, right? He's focusing on this little bitty piece of ground there. He's just got to trust that it's not going to be there. No. You just have to do that. Yeah, is that something that you've been coaching for years with kickers? Don't yes. look at that part of it. Yes. You just got to find this little spot down there and do it. Is it some guys are eat better at putting that part of it away, I guess, than others? It's got to be half the same metal on this part of it. Most of it's metal. Most of it's metal. Uh, Dave, uh, I, I appreciate you earlier explaining why quarterbacks are no longer holders. With that said, obviously, we've seen Harrison have to miss some time. Obviously, Justin Reed has, you know, emerged as like that emergency kicker for maybe that day. If Tommy is unavailable, who would be the backup holder? Considering, like you said, that operation needs so much time together. Yeah, that's. I mean, once you get to the emergency state, which that would be, uh, or I mean, it would be uh, uh, Marcus Kemp is our holder. What 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 makes him the man for that? Uh, he's got great hands, and he's a student of it, and he's practiced it. And we've trained in the training camp. We worked on that. Uh, so it yep. sounds like about punting can help win games. I think it's overlooked sometimes, but there's been numerous times this season where Tommy has come up with a huge punt in a big moment. I think about the Chargers game in Week Two, yep. uh, and last week in overtime, hitting him at their 13-yard line. What's that say about Tommy this year in big moments? Consistency. I mean, when I first stood up here. In the beginning of the season, everybody said, "What's going to be the difference with Tommy?" You know, it's going to be his consistency because we've seen flashes of him being great, but his his consistency is is what really stands out this year. Um, and you look at his charts and, and his grades that I have on my board, and it's just above average all the way across. And you know, and if not if not that, he's he's getting you know special teams player of the week, which is uh, probably the greatest honor that somebody can get. You know, and he's gotten it for the month too in September. So, I mean, it says a lot about his year. He's having a Pro Bowl year, um, you know, and he's been a major factor for us on special teams this year. Dave, what's uh, Seattle's big spin on special teams? Something about Seattle. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they, they fly around. I mean, they fly around. Uh, Larry Izzo is the coach. Larry Izzo was a, an ex, uh, you know, a great special teams player in his day, coached against him a bunch. Uh, he's got those guys uh, playing with their hair on fire. I mean, they just fly around. And, and the thing that we have to deal with this game is that we're going to have to return every kick and we're going to have to cover every kick because of the cold. You know, the cold really affects the ball. It doesn't fly like it, like it does. So, um, you know, it's going to be fun for us. We're looking forward to this one. How much is practicing inside going to affect the operation with, with the cold coming? Yeah, I mean, you, you can't. I mean, we can't get outside. The guys would just be trying to survive out there, you know. And it's really about focus. You have to learn the game plan, and everybody has to deal with the cold, and we'll we'll manage that. We've had a lot of cold games, so uh, yeah, it's 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 a factor. It's going to be a factor, and uh, you know, everybody will deal with it. Last one, Debo. Uh, one of the things that Harrison was telling us yesterday was about the kind of PSI. When you get this yeah. cold weather, that's right. It's 13. They measure them inside. It, what what can happen during the game? Can you guys say these are really flat? I mean, I don't want to get all the plate here, <laughs> but uh, it, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a, this is the coldest game you're going to have in, yep. in quite a while. Right? Yeah, the, the the bag that they put the, the balls in don't don't have a heater in it, you know. So they're going to be, you know, they're going to adjust to the, whatever the weather is. So that they will deflate a little bit. I mean, that's just physics. So I mean, there's not much we can do about that. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.